Welcome back, everybody, to another episode in our series on primatology. In today's episode, we are learning all about lorises, which includes lorises, potos, and anguantibos. Guess how many times it took me to say that correctly? As well as bush babies. Way easier. <laughs> as we complete our two video series on strepsirides. We'll be looking at these three categories of lorisids plus bush babies, examining their biologies and psychologies. So find your favorite climbing tree, grab your favorite fruit, and exercise those swinging hands as we delve into the world of lorisids. Lorises live mostly in South and Southeast Asia and are nocturnal and arboreal, which means they're up and about at night and live primarily in trees. These primates, however, are much slower than lemurs, moving slowly across tree branches rather than jumping tree to tree. They eat fruit, leaves, and bugs, and some lorises are entirely insectivorous. Laura's mothers often abandon their young in a process called infant parking, but cover them in a defensive toxin that discourages predators. Potos live primarily in forests of Central and West Africa, where they are known for their extremely short tails. In fact, the word poto means tailless monkey in the Wolof language of Senegal. They also have extremely short index fingers, spiky necks, and semi-toxic saliva. Potos primarily eat fruit, tree gum, and insects, are incredibly defensive against same-sex potos, and groom each other during courting rituals. Mothers carry their fetuses for about six to seven months and wean their young after about six months, and potos generally mature after 18 months. There are a few predators that can reach the potos due to their high elevation in trees, but deforestation and poaching is a major concern for poto numbers. Potos in captivity show signs of altruism, meaning they take care of wounded others. But there's not enough research to confirm if this happens in the wild. Enguan tibos are often called golden potos and share several traits with their fellow potos. They too live primarily in Central and West African treetops, and their anatomies are almost exactly the same as potos. They eat mostly insects and fruit, are nocturnal, have a strong sense of smell, and move incredibly slowly. Gestation among Anguan Tibos lasts about four months, and mothers wean their young after about four months as well, and they live for about 13 years. Bush babies, also known as Galagos, live primarily in sub-Saharan Africa and are both nocturnal and arboreal. They mostly eat fruit, tree gums, and insects. Mothers gestate their young for about four months. They keep in constant contact with newborn young while their babies learn to move and open their eyes on their own. Unlike lorisids, Bush babies are amazing jumpers and hop from tree to tree. Strangely, these primates create funerary nests, where individuals close to death make nests by weaving twigs and leaves together to die in. Bush babies also show both solitary and social lifestyle practices involving male grooming, and bush babies even feature in Nigerian folklore, where they get their name based on stories of bush babies making baby-like noises to lure children out into the bush at night. Lorisids and bush babies are fascinating animals that teach us a lot about some of our earliest ancestors. 
Bush Baby's funeral practice of creating their own death nests is perhaps one of the most incredible non-human primate architectural practices among primates. Unfortunately, lorises and bush babies are threatened mostly by humans through deforestation and the wild animal pet trade industry. While diseases from these animals can greatly endanger humans, the industry of selling them as pets endangers these animals even more. In our next episode, we'll be starting our journey into the species of Haplorhini, specifically tarsiers. As always, stay wild and never stop monkeying around.